<laughs> Hello. Welcome to Whiskey and Donuts, guys. I think we've got quite a few in already, so we'll just wait a wee bit longer until we <laughs> so, invite everyone in. <laughs> John, I, I'm not even going to lie, I had a little burp before we came on, and John's overreacting to it no. already. <laughs> I had fish cakes for dinner. Trap me in a room with both. I know, I know. Smell the whiskey. Cheers. Oh, Okie dokie, yeah. guys. Um, I'll still, we'll just wait a wee bit longer. There's a few more to, to join, I think. I think we all need this. I feel like I need this tonight. This will be good. Yeah, yeah me too. Keep on. Okie dokie, guys. Um, so for some of you who haven't done this before, um, my name is Matt. Uh, I'm the owner here at the Malt Room. Um, and this is Nicole. My name is Nicole, and I am the owner of Burke. So what the idea of it tonight is, is that you guys can have a little night out at home. We have some fun. Um, We've got some whiskies and Nicole's made some donuts, so we'll we'll just go through them. Um, as I say, tell us, comment the whole night. It's more fun for us when you guys get involved. Um, and yeah, the whole idea is just to have some fun and eat some donuts and whiskey and yeah. probably get drunk. Spice up the week. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so <laughs> we did put the donuts in order in your box, but just in case they got a little bit mixed up, uh, we'll go through them just before we start. So um, whiskey number one should be with the one with a wee orange peel on top. Um, whiskey two should be with the blueberry. Um, three should be with the one with all the little biscuits on top. And then four is the one with icing, but no other thing on top. And then five is the sugar one with something inside, which you will explain later. Yes. Um, okay, so I think we just, I think it looks like all the numbers here. So I think we just crack on, guys. As well as we, as we do every week, if you have any questions or you want to shout anything out, let us know. We've got John on hand to kind of, Read back to us any questions you guys ask. So if you let us know, we'll we'll do our best to answer them. Perfect. Okay, I'm gonna grab the first whiskey. That's a beer, Matt. I know. Sorry. <laughs> um, okie dokie, guys. So whiskey number one. Um, this here, trying to get the light just right. Hang on. There we go. Is called a Sila. Um, so probably most of you guys maybe have not seen this whiskey before. Um, this is by a company called Compass Box. Um, really, really interesting whiskey company. Um, you're going to have to cut me off here because I'm going to geek out on this for a while, I think. That's all right, I'll be ready for you. Um, so Compass Box were set up in 2000 by um, a guy called John Glaser, who used to be head of marketing for Johnny Walker. Um, I think one of the main things he comes across in a lot of his whiskies is that um, blends kind of get overlooked a little bit in the world of whiskey. And his idea was to make really good blends. Because um, blends can be good, it just depends what you're blending. Um, so Asyla is really light. He describes this as the perfect Sunday whiskey. Um, but as a company, they're really, really cool and they kind of challenge a lot of what kind of the Scotch Whiskey Association do. Um, so set up in 2000, 2005, they were kind of already in trouble with them. Um, they were trying to age whiskey with kind of French oak staves, but like putting them inside the cast, like inner staves, um, to try and change the whiskey quicker, I guess, or not necessarily quicker, but just to make a different flavor. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, they got in trouble for that. So then they changed the cask ends. And the thing I really like about Compass Box is they're trying to be as transparent as possible in the whiskey world. So um, when you buy a, a, a bottle of, say, any any blend available, um, you don't actually know what the breakdown is and kind of what's in it. Um, mm -hmm. Whereas they've kind of wanted to be open and honest about that. And they want to put it on the bottles, but again, that's not within the rules. Um, so their websites are great. They put like all their kind of breakdowns in the bottle. So Asyla, what you have here, um, this is 22% Linkwood. Um, it is 23% teeniness, um, 5% Glenelgan, and 50% grain whiskey, Cameron Bridge. So this is a mix of grain and um, malt whiskey. Oh, yeah. So it's most blends don't have that high percentage of malt, mm -hmm. and the malts they've used are quite light and delicate. So huh. yeah, have a smell, have a taste. Cheers. Chin chin. Cheers. Cheers. I feel I'm going to stop there. I think that's enough compass box. That's, yeah. I could go that on. Was a, that was an okay amount. Was an okay amount? Yeah, it was acceptable. Mm -hmm. I don't stop you, these guys, though, so yeah. we'll be all right. <laughs> We're a good team. Mm. So, yeah, they, they kind of describe that as like a harmonious dram. Mm. Um, really well balanced, really delicate. So, what have we got um, with it? Yeah, so the donut we've got today, there's no filling in this one, um, but we've done a fresh grapefruit glaze. So, that kind of citrusy, zingy sort of flavour, and it's got a wee um, grapefruit twist on the top there. So, simple hopefully quite effective it should be quite light as well so that's kind of what we're, what we're going with mm. here with the, with the salad i've never tried a salad before so shooting blind a little mm. bit let me know if it's a good combination rubbish 
からな。やめろ。うん。<笑>うん、nice. Super fresh. I like grapefruit. It's good. Yeah, me too. It's a good tip, you know. So I think this is like a. I hate saying introduction whiskey or intro whiskey, but like, I think most people could get on board with that.、Mm -hmm. I think they actually annoyingly don't make it anymore.、Um, this was actually came from. I had a case of this put away because I actually really, really like it, and、um, like、went up to the attic and brought it down. And so yeah, you might be able to find it in some auction sites now. It's not crazily expensive. I think it goes maybe about sixty-ish, seventy pounds a bottle now,、mm -hmm. which I guess for a, a blend, I guess you could say is quite expensive, but. I think when you know what's in it and the taste of it, I think it's, I think it's worth it. Do you know?、Yeah. I'm not usually mad about grain, but I actually really like that. I can drink that quite easily.、Mm -hmm. Dangerous territory, starting、totally. starting on a good note. That totally.、Mm. Yeah, I'm a fan. What are you guys thinking about Compass Box? Anyone had Compass Box before? Got Silas beautiful there by Fiona.、Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree with you.、Good. Yeah, super super nice, easy going whiskey.、Mm -hmm. um, We were lucky enough actually to go down to their sort of blending room. Me and John, they're they're、mm. based down in Chiswick,、um, in West London,、um, which is actually where my sister's from. So it was very convenient for us to go down, say hello to my sister, and spend the day drinking whiskey. It's not right.、Um, I know, I know. It just kind of <laughs> fell on my feet that one. It was great.、Um, it's any whiskey fan's kind of dream. It's quite a modern office,、um, but in the back of it, they have this sort of like imagine like a glass squash court is the best way I can describe it, but a little bit smaller. Table in the middle and just boxes and boxes and boxes of little test tubes, kind of like the ones you guys have at home, but all clear ones, where they just kind of experiment with everything.、Um, That's exciting. Yeah, and they're they're quite a fun company as well. Like they, there's a thing called、um, like kind of caramel coloring, which a lot of whiskey companies use. It's basically called E. It's E one o five is what it is, but a lot of companies sometimes add coloring to their whiskey to make it darker because people think darker whiskey is older and better,、mm -hmm. um, which there's potentially something in that, but Not really, is at the same time,、mm -hmm. um, and yeah, they had a cool little bottle of this stuff, and I'd never actually seen it in person. It's like super gloopy and caramel, and、oh. um, they had this like skull and crossbones on it, saying "Evil Spirit Caramel." You know, Funny、so. that that's allowed. You know, there's so many regulations for whiskey, but something like that's actually allowed. I know. Like, that blows I know. My mind a little bit I know.、Um, the jury's out on that one a little bit.、Um, I think most whiskey fans would probably agree with that and say、mm -hmm. color isn't the most important thing.、Mm -hmm. But I guess if you're a huge distillery and trying to make like a Consistent product, you know. If you look at a, a shelf in a supermarket and、mm -hmm. see loads of different colors in each、oh, different、same. bottle, yeah, suppose, yeah. you might be like, "Oh, that one. What's wrong with that one?" Or you know. So okay, I, I get it, but my argument is that I've never seen a distillery lighten a whiskey. Yeah. So if it was for consistency, you know, I don't know. But I'm not gonna. Delve into、up. that. I'm、That's、not gonna get、a... into that rabbit hole. <laughs> yeah. Noise up distilleries because, to be honest, ninety percent of them do.、Mm -hmm. um, Very few don't, and it's part of the industry, and people can get on their high horse about it, like I kind of almost am. <laughs>、yeah. um, but no, we'll we'll leave it there. I think. Okay, let's move on. Next whiskey. <laughs> okay, <laughs> what do we have next?、Mm. I need to tell you. Yeah, you need to tell me.、I'm、just having a beer.、Sorry. I'm like looking at. Oh, <laughs>、no. oh, I'll take the head as well. Okay, okay. I could tell you the donut first if you like. I'm excited about this donut. This is going to be a good. Yeah, I think this is going to be a. A good combo too. So,、um, whiskey number two,、um, one I'm sure you have all heard of. Complete other end of the scale for any sort of whiskey fan. I'm sure you have heard of Glenfiddich. So, this is Glenfiddich 15.、Um, I love this dram.、Um, this is a whiskey that kind of like Balvenie 14 as well. That it was on those whiskies that was, is available、um, and is just super drinkable,、um, really approachable, well priced, and just really, really well made. Um, love the new bottle design as well.、Um, I think this was yeah, it was mid mid last year, twenty nineteen.、Yeah. I think it was about June time.、Uh, they launched this, and I didn't actually know they were doing it, and it just came in on in our delivery, and we thought, what is that?、Um, but yeah, really good. There's been some rebrandings recently that I've not loved by other companies. But again, won't go into those. But,、um, <laughs> go on, tell no, us. No, no, no. Take、um, yourself a yeah,、old. maybe ask me after Dram Five. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, I love Glenfiddich's new new one. So、um, for those who don't know, Glenfiddich and Gaelic—not that I speak a lot of Gaelic, but I do know this one—means、um, valley of the deer.、Um, and on their bottle, it's quite cool. They've got like a little、What、valley of the deer, and、ah. it looks like a wee valley cut into the glass. I don't know if you can see it there,、um, but I think that's a nice little touch. I think that's、mm -hmm. really really cool.、Like um, yeah, me too. 
Um, so yeah, really cool, cool bottle design. Um, the story with the whiskey, um, probably again, one of the most interesting Glenfiddichs going. Um, it's all about their Solera vat. So um, a Solera vat is basically taken from sort of Spain and Portugal mm -hmm. where they, they make sherry. And it's the idea it's of, a big vat, yeah, it's like yeah, a huge yeah. oak tun. And what happens is you're constantly adding and it never gets empty. So Glenfiddich started this in 1998, I think it was, and it's never been below half. So mm -hmm. they're constantly adding um, new oak, uh, bourbon and sherry casks, uh, all minimum sort of 15 and they're sort of adding it and then it kind of goes and the whole re kind of point of, of that is it kind of harmonizes all the spirits together. It's like a marrying of all the casks yeah, yeah. Um, and produces a really consistent product as well. Um, so yeah, that's how it, I know and yeah. taste and see what we think. Cheers. 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 So the, um, the donut with this one is, um, I'm doing it that we have made before and it kind of just it rung good bells with me when you were chatting about this whiskey before but so we have a blueberry and ginger jam and then the glaze is a sort of fresh ginger glaze with a wee blueberry and um, so it's a pairing that's gone well really well for us in the past and we're chatting about this and the kind yeah. of gingery fiery notes in it I feel yeah. like it's going to be complemented quite well hopefully yeah. with this donut so. so it's kind of like dark fruits and I should say oak and then mm. on the palate what I normally get from this is that sort of oaky, spicy ginger kind of thing going on. Um, so yeah, try that one. I've tried this donut last night. We were chatting mm -hmm. and saying, when I'm normally rambling on about whiskey, I kind of take a bite of the donut, but don't fully embrace yeah. myself into it. Um, and was in helping you guys last night and tried one and it is phenomenal. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's good. Silence is a good sign. Mm -hmm. Should we just stop talking for a minute and eat donuts mm -hmm. and yeah. eat whiskey? Mm -hmm. So also with these pairings, there's no right and wrong answer. Everyone's palates are different. What I think goes well together, you might hate. So um, please let us know if you kind of switching your donuts about at the end. You want to try them different whiskeys if you've got any left. <laughs> yeah, because, um, yeah, you know, just everyone's different and there's lots of different things that work with everything else. So For sure. I like, yeah, mm -hmm. I like to leave a little bit of whiskey as well and make a bit of a blend. Mm -hmm. Taste the ginger in that donut. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's good, right? Fiery. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I like it. Mm. I'm going to put this down before I eat the whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> that whiskey's nice as well. Mm -hmm. Again, it's not one that you feel like you need to add water to. To You know, it's quite mm -hmm. easy going. Super palatable. Mm -hmm. Lovely sort of richness, a bit of spice as well. I think it's great, and I think so does everyone. I think it was the first 15 year old to be in the top 10 whiskeys, single malt whiskeys wow. in the category. So it's quite a big deal, really. I mm -hmm. mean, it's, it's maybe got a strange age. A lot of people maybe kind of it's in the middle of the market, isn't it? Like if you, some people just say, I'll get a 10 or a 12, and other mm -hmm. people are at the other extreme and go super old. But mm -hmm. 15 is a really nice age. I think it's great. I like that. It's good. I feel like the, the donut and the whiskey actually balance itself out quite nicely. Yeah, I'm going to go in. For, I don't think the one more powers more. the other out. So that's, it's quite nice. Let us know what you think if you feel like it's a good match. Any questions, John? No questions yet? Nothing. Cool. Covering all bases. Next mm. level donut. Who's seen that? Clear. Thank you. That is. <laughs> oh, that's my favourite so far. That makes me happy. Yeah. Yeah, it's a good. Mm -hmm. I am a personal favourite of that one. So is the ginger that. in the jam? Yeah. So we've put ginger in the jam and we've also got ginger in the glaze as well on the top. So, so you just shave it in? Um, no. Boil it down. You cook it down. I'm giving away your secrets here. Sorry. I know. Sorry. You pay me for my recipes. Mm -hmm. No. <laughs> uh, you know, we could pay get... in whiskey. Well, we can have some <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I like my whiskey. Mm. I haven't really left much of that, actually. I mean, I leave quite a lot, but again, that's a dangerous bottle for me. <clears throat> I'm going to try and keep, keep a little bit to come back to. It's I went, nice to a, though. I went to a wedding once in, in Sweden with my sister's friend and I was, I was still a student at the time, so I was going through duty free, and we were staying in in their house. So oh, I need to kind of bring something. So in the airport, bought a fifteen year old Glenfiddich, and went down really, really well. And ever since then, it's kind of stuck with me as a kind of that dram from the wedding. And I'm glad I did because I don't know if anyone's been to Sweden before, but drinks are very <laughs> expensive. Um, so having that with me. Bring your own whiskey. Mm, that and a kilt was my savior because as a student, and even now I don't think I can afford to drink out in Sweden. Um, the Swedes love their whiskey, um, which is great. And when they come over here, it's they're a joy to have, but wow, their, their drink is expensive. Um, yeah. 
I think I'd be a much healthier person if I lived in Sweden. Yeah. 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 I think we could all say that to be yeah. honest. Yeah. I'd have lots of like you know furniture from IKEA. I think. Yeah. Oh, what's it called? IKEA. Yeah. Swedish. Yeah. What's it called? Build your furniture. No, what's it called? Flat pack. Flat pack. There we go. <laughs> build your own furniture. Build your own furniture. You can oh, see, that's an you inventive can name. You can, you can tell I build a lot of furniture. <laughs> yeah. Flat furniture. You're building boxes. That's the one. Yeah. You said just like your old man. I know. Well, I've never built furniture in my life. To be fair, <laughs> I'm not going to try and pretend I have. <laughs> I do. My dad kind of mm. he was around cutting the grass today as well. Oh, he's I a know. gem. He's actually doing the tasting just now. So thanks for cutting the grass, Dad. Cheers. <laughs> <Thank you. laughs> um, okay, so let's go to number three. So yeah, yeah good dram. That was tasty. I'm definitely gonna um, come back to that. So we actually have a, a friend of ours coming in to yeah, if you want to add him in, John, that'd be great. So just down the bottom, um, and then yeah, click on the that's you. Yeah. Hello. Hey guys. How Hello. are you doing? I'm turn my speakers up. My... Oh, there you go. That's I think one. I might be muted. Perfect. How are you doing? I'm doing good. No, no. There muted. we go. It was. I had that mistake last time as well. Ah. Good, good. So we um, you get you've got the whiskey and donuts in front of you as well, haven't you? I do. Yes, I've been tasting along with you. The first oh, two were phenomenal. Sorry. Good. Good. Oh, good. good. No, no, we we lost you for a second there, but I think we're we're oh, back cool. on. It's a wee bit delayed, I but I think we're all good. Okay, sorry. Cool. <laughs> cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's funny. It's quite funny. You, you live in Inverness, and we've done this for people across the pond as well, and it's like <laughs> it never runs smoothly. It doesn't matter yeah. how close you yeah, are. Yeah. There's always like a, a no, tiny bit. Never of does. We'll, we'll get there. <laughs> um, so, mm -hmm. whiskey, whiskey number three is well, actually, for for people who don't know you, and do you want to give yourself a little bit of a, a quick intro. intro about who you are and uh, what you do? Yeah, I can do. Um, so I'm one of the global whiskey ambassadors at Diageo, um, based here in Inverness, but look after basically pretty much all of our Scotch whiskies around the world. Um, one of the brands that I've worked on since we launched it was Hey Club. So when you said you're interested in including it in this session, I thought I'd definitely like to get involved. So yeah, happy to tell you anything you want to know about it. <laughs> cool. Cool. So what was what's the idea behind Hay Club and, and what is it? So Hay Club is a single grain Scotch whiskey. It's made at Cameron Bridge Distillery in Fife, which I think you mentioned already has been one of the components in the Asyla. Um We launched the brand about five years ago, maybe five and a half years ago. And the idea behind it was um, really to create an accessible style of Scotch whiskey, a Scotch whiskey that kind of kind of push the boundaries in terms of how people view Scotch whiskey. So a lot of it's about making a very smooth, very accessible, easy to enjoy whiskey, but also one that mixes really well. Um, we encourage people to try it in cocktails and, and try it even in cocktails beyond the normal Scotch whiskey cocktails that you see all the time. So, you know, a couple of the drinks that I love making with it are an espresso martini, um, oh, which is great. just amazing. Um, yeah. Makes a great Boulevardier, which is basically a Negroni, but made with whiskey. Um, or just served long in a highball with tonic and a squeeze of orange, you know. So a lot of it's about sort of pushing into sort of uh, that gin and vodka and even sort of um, bourbon territory with some of the drinks that we do. And it works really well. The packaging is a bit unlike any other scotch as well. I so like again, it. it was, yeah, I mean, it's different. It was yeah. designed to be stylish, cool, catch the eye and just not to follow the usual rules of scotch yeah. and obviously as i'm sure you know we partnered with david beckham to launch this yeah. and again it just talks to that sort of stylish iconic sort of branding but also kind of pulls people in that maybe wouldn't have considered trying scotch otherwise yeah so a lot yeah. of it's about recruiting new people into the category so it's it's kind of a win for us but if they then go on and drink other whiskeys that's great too because yeah. it's yeah. drinkers that we didn't have before yeah so yeah, yeah. good point it's really accessible and I think I've done that proper middle age thing now. When I was decanting <laughs> bottles, I've actually taken off the labels and like, oh, I'll use this for a water jug on my yeah. table. <laughs> oh, am I becoming that person? Oh, <laughs> you know, it, it happens. Um, a, lot yeah, yeah. <laughs> a lot of people have been turning. Yeah, a lot of people have been turning these into lampshades and things. So yeah, yeah that I works. Know. I think that's <laughs> me right great, now. You know. Thanks. Yeah, yeah. Not <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so let's try the whiskey. And do you want to talk us through the donut? Yeah, yeah. So um, we've got just a vanilla custard. I think vanilla is probably quite a big flavour um, in Hague. Well, for us, and yeah, we kind of pick yeah, that out. So yeah. Um, yeah, we went for a vanilla custard, and it's just got a wee sort of biscuit crumb on there just to balance that out. So it's to be 
should be quite easy. Mm. 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 I can't say okay, I haven't it... ever tried Hague. I don't think I've ever tried this before. Okay. Um, so this is the, the Clubman um, expression. Oh, yeah. um, it's single grain, obviously. It's matured exclusively in American ex-bourbon barrels. So you get a lot of, sort of butterscotch, vanilla, toffee, caramel sweetness coming from the style of whiskey, but also the casks. So again, it'll, it'll go beautifully with, with this donut. It goes really well with things like creme brulee. Um, it's just a really gentle, approachable style of whiskey. And like yeah. I say, great for bringing people into into the world of whiskey. You know, yeah. so often when we introduce someone to scotch, we hand them a, a neat whiskey and sort mm -hmm. of say, enjoy that. And you would never do that with any other spirit. You wouldn't do that with gin yeah. or vodka. So it's um, for me, it's all about attracting people to try whiskey. Yeah. yeah. I did see um, a couple of weeks ago, I think it was, somewhere online that um, I think is a great idea. Um, it's like cans of whiskey you're doing, like mixed mm. whiskey, or What's the story with that? That looks great. Yes. So we just launched it. I think it's available in Tesco's now, and it's going to hit various other supermarkets in the next few weeks. But it's um, Hey Club, uh, Clubman and Cola in one of them, and the others with uh, ginger ale and lime in the other. So it's mm. two, two sort of um, styles that we have. And again, it's just about letting people try it in a different way. Um, a lot of people throughout Western Europe, in particular in Southern Europe, drink Scotch whiskey and cola all the time. So yeah. it's kind of introducing people to that. And again, with this style of co of um, of whiskey, it works quite well with cola because you've got the sweetness of the cola, you got the sweetness yeah. of the whiskey, and it just it just kind of works. Yeah, you're. I think you're quite similar minded to to me in that one. That yeah, like there's certain whiskies. I wouldn't play around with if they're you know mm. 30, 40 years old but apart from that like do what you like you know like yeah well, like Lagavulin 16 is one of my favorites and I think was it yourself who came into the bar and asked for a smoky cokey I might have been could have been yeah and I was like oh and I was still at that point like oh god that's quite a good whiskey to be mixing coke with but trying it <laughs> It speaks for itself. It's great. I mean, if it's going to... We get actually, at the Isla Festival last year, we had um, smoky cookies on draft. And oh, wow. Like, with the distillery workers, we had people who'd worked at the distilleries of decades ago that were now retired, horrified we were doing that. And then they yeah. tried it, and they're like, yeah, it's actually pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> nice. I nice. suppose it's like recreating a new normal, in a way, with whiskey. Yeah. It's been, you know, we've said this before about, like, there's a funny stigma and women drinking yeah. it probably not you know or then that the young people kind of view it as like an older person's drink you know and it's I suppose if you see something like this on the shelf you know young people who are it's affordable too drinking. isn't it mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. yeah retails about 25 ish is that about right yeah it's it's pretty frequently on offer as well as those at 16 17 so and again it's about getting people to try it for that first time because generally when they try it for the first time they like the taste and they'll, they'll buy it again so quite often it is on offer at a very good price Nice. The other cool thing I would say about the distillery, it's, it's the biggest whiskey distillery in Scotland. Um, so we own 28 single malt distilleries. This one distillery makes more whiskey than all of the rest of them put together. Wow. And that's because most of the whiskey we make here is used in Johnny Walker and other blends. But it's actually a really sustainable distillery. So we actually now are able to um, reprocess all of the byproducts from distilling and use that to entirely power the distillery. So it's wow. actually got the ability to be self-powering, even though it makes about 120 million litres of alcohol a year. That's so it's amazing. quite a cool place, actually, yeah. Yeah, I've never been to a green distillery, like a mass green distillery. I would like to go, actually. See um, if we can set it up at some point, yeah. We're going to get a trip out of this. Don't say yes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> John, would you like to come with me? Yes. <laughs> no, you might. <laughs> Bring the gang. It's all good. Yeah. I'm not bringing the donuts, so if I'm not getting them... <laughs> <laughs> so I just wrote a couple of questions down for you as well, you and just sure, yeah. Um, so the screen, like you travel around the world quite a lot, I guess, with your job. And what's the strangest sort of thing that's happened at a tasting? Oh God! Um, I the question's not like, <laughs> what's your favorite? You know? Um, that is pretty hard to pin down. There's been so many weird things have happened. <laughs> um, I mean. <laughs> De definitely sort of when we when we first launched this brand with with david um five and a half six years ago we we did a sort of whistle stop tour of asia and i think we hit 10 different cities in 10 days wow. so we're literally flying every night and doing a new city each day wow. and it was just absolutely insane how popular he was in in those countries wow. and i remember one evening we went into uh 
small restaurant in um, in Ho Chi Minh, and very very quiet night. It was just us and a few of our uh, key um, customers, and had a lovely meal. And as we we're stepping out, we realised about five thousand people had gathered outside the restaurant, and we couldn't leave. <laughs> uh, so I turned to David. I was just like, "What do we do?" He's like, "Should we go and have another drink?" I was like, "Yeah, let's do that." <laughs> <laughs> Took about took about two hours to clear a path for us to actually get out of this place. Wow. So yeah, that was uh, that was pretty weird. <laughs> It's like trying to get through foxes at Christmas time. Similar, yeah, yeah. <laughs> People were just as excited. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, and another question, kind of similar, is that um, I asked Scott Adamson this actually, and I think it's quite a, a good question. Is that people come over here and ask us all the time about haggis, and you know the idea mm. of it is obviously the ingredients are quite strange, but to us it seems normal. Have you ever been in a situation where you've like been presented? at a dinner and you think oh god you know this is very odd but you have to be polite and eat it and what was it uh, yes um, <laughs> so many times um i think the worst was about 10 years ago i was in suriname and it had been a nightmare journey to get there we'd ended up landing in guyana and spending the night on an aircraft floor and find sorry an airport floor finally got in suriname the next day jet lag to hell and um, they took me for lunch and the, the lunch was basically a sort of butcher shop and we walked in and the guy produced this bucket of sort of warm water which had these raw sausages sort of sitting in it and he's just like lunch and i was like yeah i'm not eating that <laughs> and i'm pretty adventurous i'll eat most things but i mean these were just raw and slightly warm not even display temperature just slightly warm and yeah, yeah. That's yeah, so yeah, that, that's that's a pretty bad one. Yeah, yeah, backed away rapidly from that. But um, I yeah. deep fried dove in Shanghai. That was um, quite awful as well. Yeah, deep fried what? Dove, dove, yeah. bird of peace. Yeah, oh, bird of, <laughs> bird of peace. Yeah, no. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> deep fried. Oh, no. Yeah, yeah, beak and everything. It was yeah, wow. not great. I did eat it. Wow, did you wow, feel wow. loved after you ate it? I did. I did. <laughs> yeah. So we've got a good question here, actually. Um, yeah. So the difference between Hague and mm -hmm. uh, was it Hague and Hague Clubman? Clubman. Yeah. The two. Yeah. There's the like square bottle, and there's the rectangle yeah. bottle here. Um, yeah. Sure. So um, both made at Cameron Rivers Distillery, both single grain Scotch whiskey. Um, both of them actually have sort of three age points of of whiskey. From that distillery brought together um, with the let's call it the deluxe expression. There's an, a wider range and older in the mix. Um, this actually has surprisingly old whiskey in it as well. But um, the other key difference is the maturation process. So with Clubman, it's all matured exclusively in ex bourbon barrels. So they've been held bourbon once and then the single grain once, okay, for a range of different age points. With the deluxe expression, it's actually three different cast types that are used. So we use um, fresh bourbon barrels. We use refill casks, so they've held whiskey several times. That allows a bit more of that sweet, kind of delicate distillery character to shine a bit more. And then the third one is rejuvenated casks. And that just gives it a little bit of spice and a lot of intensity. So with the deluxe expression, it's a broader range of ages and considerably older. Yeah. It's a much more involved maturation process. So I would say it's a more complex um, whiskey. Um, there's a bit more depth to it. it. It mixes very well too. It's still quite light in style, but definitely sort of more layers of flavour. Whereas with Clubman, I mean, essentially a, a very approachable and relatively simple style, but actually one that just just works. Yeah, great. That's good info. I didn't know that, so mm -hmm. I don't know if that was a question from someone. Uh, John just yeah, someone asked that question. So mm -hmm. great. There uh, you go. Yeah. Well, thanks very much, you. I think that's yeah. It's no worries. A good insight into what you do and. Uh, into the <laughs> world. So, um, yeah, I love the donut as well. I think that went really well. Yeah, it was beautiful. Nice, nice one. <laughs> yeah, well, thanks again, and we'll leave you to enjoy uh, the last two. And thanks thank you. you. Cheers, guys. Cheers. Thank you. Thank so you. Much. Tap. Bye. <laughs> Great. There we go. Thanks, John. Perfect. Love. So yeah, interesting. Great. So. So we're moving on to number four now, isn't number it? Four. Next? Yeah, yeah. Let's key number four. Let's go have that. What was everyone's sort of thoughts on Hague? Were people liking, not liking? I think people liked it. Yeah. 
big bottle looks like a perfume after you. It does, yeah. Mm. It reminds me of Chanel a little bit, but I like the Chanel. Was it a manly Chanel? Mm -hmm. yeah. I, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. I was like, girls yeah. Chanel are not blue. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> was it eau de perfume or perfume or something? I once did that and you stick to your whiskey. Okay? Well, I know. I, I was coming home one time, honestly, from a trip. And oh, I was, I don't again, know, maybe, maybe. Oh, I know, quite young. And I had to get my sister a present. And I was like in the Yves Saint Laurent section. And all these perfumes were like really expensive. And then there was this thing called Parfum. It was like 29 euros or something. I thought, oh, I'll just get her that one. And it was just like, face cream or something it wasn't actually perfume i got your perfume she's like this isn't perfume <laughs> thanks <laughs> just me being cheap when i was younger <laughs> so oh God. sorry karen yeah um okay whiskey number four um so we are going on to dalmore 15 um so really really popular sort of whiskey uh here um so dalmore uh, history of dalmore sort of 1263 um the Mackenzie clan uh, were there and King Alexander III was there and this basically big stag went for him uh, they managed to uh, defend um, the king and kill the stag and as a thank you the king gave the Mackenzie clan um, the 12 point stag that they could use on their coat of arms um, then um, descendants of the Mackenzie clan um, came into Dalmore distillery and ever since that is why there's a stag on all their bottles so um it's a good story yeah there's a huge painting of it as well um i think there's a replica up at dalmore but i think it's like one of the biggest paintings in the uk it is yeah. massive um where is it? i don't know where hmm. it is right now i think it's like most art gets moved around a yeah. bit but um someone might know that yeah let us know, yeah, let us know. <laughs> it's it will be uh, i'm gonna say edinburgh or london oh. i think it will be um but yeah the 15 is great um so um it's a mixture of three sherry casks um methuselism Oh, I've written this down. I always get it. Matusla, I can never say that one. Uh, let's have a quick we look. Apostoles and Amoroso. So three sherry casks sort of combined to make the 15. Um, it's just like Christmas cake in a glass is the way I would describe it. Um, super rich. Um, not natural colour. Um, but, you know, I won't get into that again. Uh oh, let's not do yourself a thing just I know. yet. But yeah, super rich in the nose. You get that sort of chocolate, orange. Mm. yeah it's just those sort of raisins and dark fruits come through as well in, in the 15 um for me it's the best of the range actually um i'd have a 15 over an 18 all day long with this mm. um the 12's 12 great as well but for me even even the older stuff i think the 15 is is great so mm. talk us through what you've done yeah so um we've kind of gone along the lines of like the idea of a christmas cake because there's big flavors in the stand more and it's big on sherry we thought we'd sort of fill the inside with chopped fruit. So it's a mixture um, of raisins and dates and cherries and a kind of bunch of chopped, um, dried chopped fruits all together. And then we've got like a really sort of cinnamon, in, sort of cinnamon nutmeg, allspice sort of glaze. Um, should be kind of bringing that Christmassy vibes back. So mm. it should hopefully work quite well with it. Sure. Um, I'm interested to see what people think about this one. It's a wee bit of a, a big trial for us. We haven't mm. done this before. So yeah, I thought we'd give that a go. Where about we go? Mm -hmm. Yeah, Damo's super popular in the bar as well. It's mm -hmm. you can see why. It's just if you like that sort of sherry rich style whiskey, it's kind of the one for you. You know, I would say like what describes Highland whiskey, probably that mm -hmm. sort of rich, robust. I feel like with dram and the donuts together, it kind of just feels like I'm sitting around a table at Christmas time. It does totally. give you that like yeah. You can taste that. Is it like, what have you put in that? Cinnamon or something, is it? Well, nutmeg, cinnamon, nutmeg, cinnamon. Mm -hmm. ginger, a wee bit of ginger. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is a good Christmas time drama. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Cheers. Mm, sorry, cheers. <laughs> <laughs> what have we got? That's the best donut yet, my mum. Mm. Andy Ross, the Dalmore well, is perfect post-Christmas. I mean... Great. That's my cousin. I feel like I'm just having a family conversation. Yeah. Here. I feel like it's like family Zoom quiz or like something. it's like Christmas and they're like, what? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That actually, mm. I quite like the fruits on the inside to be honest. I'm quite surprised at that. I think it looks quite, looks quite nice. Well, that's the first one you've done. Fruits, is it? Yeah, just fruits. Normally, we'll we'll sort of cook fruits down mm -hmm. or we'll do something with it, but we've never just kind of really chopped them and then, yeah, tasty, poofed them in, you know. But poof them in, poof them in. yeah, the, the care and finesse that goes into your donuts, just poof them in, <laughs> get them out. We're on dram four now, oh, yeah. so. <laughs> It's my favourite of the night. 
Great. <laughs> oh, God. Uh. <laughs> mm. But on a serious note, you were there all day yesterday and there till one in the morning last night, I think, doing them. So spoofing them in probably doesn't do it justice. Mm. <laughs> Gently placing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, I've got to take lots of care of my donuts. Did you so. count the raisins per one? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I thought you would do that. <laughs> <laughs> so, I'm actually, pleasantly surprised at that. Yeah. Dalmore's usually not one that I would choose in a bar, honestly. It's not like my. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know. Maybe I've got this thing in my head because people always go on about it. It's almost like I want to try other things because it ever yeah. has it and everyone's got it. And if there's something a little bit different in the bar, then I want to try that instead. But actually, it's a good jam, you know? It's a very premium whiskey, mm -hmm. um, which I'm kind of with you in that. I maybe wouldn't order it in a bar. Um, it's one of those drams that like sitting like this is great because you can really enjoy it and take your time with it. But mm -hmm. I think if you're on a night, I don't know if I drink Dalmore, mm -hmm. it's maybe a little bit too, I don't know. It's, as I say, it's, it's a premium, it's a premium product at a premium price. Mm -hmm. The whiskey is great, don't get me wrong, but mm, don't know. Time and a place for it, I think. Time and a place. I suppose you can see that about everything, eh? Yeah, true, yeah. true. Um, yeah, nice. And the 15 so. for me is the one. Um, the 18 is good. Maybe not worth the jump, but um, yeah. What are people saying to it? Can't get the top off the bottle. <laughs> no. David Martin. David Martin. Oh, oh no. no. Well, maybe give it a wee smack on the table or something, yeah. it might help. <laughs> Speaking of bottles, actually, um, I know some of you guys have got a full house here and have done it every single time. So um, those little plastic bottles, um, I think in the email I said, if you guys want to recycle them, um, leave them out. We can put them and sterilize them. It's quite a, quite a good thing for us because I do. we get hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of these bottles delivered to the flat. And I'm aware that they all are plastic, so we should maybe... As a group, try and be a Recycle bit more as much as we can. Be a bit more efficient with them rather than ordering new ones every single time. Um, I think that would be good for for everyone. Yeah. But yeah. Cheers. I'm gonna I'm gonna make a blend at the end here. I oh think. God, dangerous. I know. I do I like. Feel like a I blend. already want to go back and mix things up a little bit. I, I want I want to try the blueberry donut actually with this one as well. Yeah. Just because yeah. it's quite a powerful. It's pretty pretty powerful. A beast. It can a beast hold its own, it. you know. Mm -hmm. So I think maybe against it. And how I did you know. how did you put the jam in here? I've gently placed, gently placed, caressed, caressed it in. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I <laughs> think that's quite weird. Those well. here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you enjoying that? Oh, great, <laughs> great. My favorite Q and A of the night. <laughs> <laughs> Where there's a will, Adam. You obviously just hate us Mackenzie's, Nicole. Gary McKenzie. Oh. No, Gary, I love you. Don't worry. <laughs> Let's try that together. Do you know, I don't think it works as well as a Christmas one. No. But weird, isn't it? Yeah. Doesn't yeah. work. Yeah, no, that does not work. Don't try that. Uh, yeah. <laughs> that's so good. So what you're saying, what, what we're saying is that We've done very well so yeah, far. Yeah, I've really thought about this, mm -hmm. you know. And it's been perfect until now, I would From, say. It's been yeah. pretty, you know, I've tried to mix up, mm -hmm. prove myself correct. Some say genius, others. Donutter. Legend. Legend. <laughs> <laughs> like we need to get on because we're getting a bit pissed. <laughs> Just right. think if we're back oh, in a bar. Donuts are going for a wobbler. Oh, there we go. James. Okay, guys, uh, we will go on to dram number five. Oh, I'm actually very excited about this pairing as well. This could be a good one. Ooh. Okay, dokie, I'll be surprised if any of you guys have heard of this as well. So we've, this is a bit of a curveball one. Um, so this is called Old Ballantruin. Um, so really standout bottle. Um, so this was first released in 2001. Um, as a sort of experiment by the guys at Tom and Towel. Um, almost like what Balvenie do with their peat week, they decided to um, make a peated expression one week a year. Um, and they went all out as well. The, the barley they're using is 50 ppm. So ppm stands for parts per million. Um, and it's kind of a measurement of how sort of peated the barley is really in terms of fennels. Um, it's sometimes quite a good measure, sometimes can be 
when you distill whiskey, it goes through so many processes and temperatures that actually um, PPM can be a bit irrelevant, but it is a high starting point. Um, so to have peated whiskey from Speyside is quite unusual. Um, what are you giggling at? Just... <laughs> I'm trying to be my whiskey thing here, and you're just laughing just, away. You keep saying PPM really quickly, and it just keeps catching me off guard. We laugh. <laughs> I did see you smirk, and I was like, I'm going to try and get through my little... <laughs> Things I've practiced here, but no, no. PPM, oh, sorry, PPM, I'm, right. on, I'm just yep. getting carried away here. So, what's what? Why is it called Old Barn Druin? I have no idea. What no you're idea. <laughs> <laughs> All I can hear is PPM. It just get me to laugh. Um, Barn is basically a spring um, on um, Carn Barn Um and that's why Tom and Tal decided to set up there because it was okay. a good source of water, um, and that's why it's called Old Barn Druin after the spring that they use. Um, so, yeah, peated. Um, space side whiskey. Um, you want to talk us through your, your donut before I say PPM? Maybe. PPM, but it's okay. You have to remember what that means at the end. Yeah. Um, yeah, so this one is kind of simple, but the filling I think should hopefully work for a lot of you. So we've got a mocha chocolate ganache on the inside. Um, so that kind of coffee rich dark chocolate um pairing, which is a big, you know, I'm a big coffee fan, of course, per coffee and donuts, but um, yeah, and then just like a sort of chocolate sugar on the outside, and um, so keeping it simple on the outside and then having that big sort of powerful sort of mouthy flavor on the inside. So that kind of rich chocolate usually works quite well when there's like Ooh. a big bit of smoke and things. Wow. Know? Okay. Yeah. I'm, really, oh, like, I'm excited about this. Please let me know what you think. I'm, yeah, I'm looking that whiskey is up my street. So yeah. 50 percent yeah 50 percent as well non-chill filtered mm, 50%. um yeah so That's made of water. big mouthfeel um yeah chewy chewy smoke it's great um and i think that with coffee is going to be great mm, that is big isn't it i like that though yeah me too i feel like that's what i grew up drinking <laughs> you know from your grandpa when you're young. <laughs> <laughs> that donut's good. Mm, thank you. So is that is that a Grenache? Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> a what? A Grenache? Is that what you said? Just a ganache. A ganache. There's no, no R. Grenache. <laughs> okay. There's no R. <laughs> okay. Good. So what's a ganache? Mm. How'd you make a ganache? Oh, you're letting me tell all my secrets today. Mm -hmm. So the ganache is basically um we put like um unsalted butter, cream, and chocolate. And so you boil the cream and the butter together. And here we put in coffee and at this point kind of bring it to a boil, mix it with chocolate so it makes it really smooth and silky and um probably yeah and then you cool it down and when it's um a ganache filling yeah the butter when it's not filling in just a glaze you don't want it to do you don't need the butter um and yeah and it kind of goes quite thick and holds together really well um and yeah you can normally flavor it with quite a lot you can mm. make it salt and things too but yeah i think mocha for me is such a great flavor that chocolate coffee really works chocolate and coffee it's like i always say like that dark chocolate and coffee is the way i think about it, it's like a kind of espresso and a cigarette you know like mm. i'm not a smoker but you know, when I've been drinking and stuff, I have had a cigarette, of course I have, and like that coffee. Close your ears, June. I know. <laughs> He's got asthma. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, no, like I get that smoking and kind of strong, bitter coffee thing kind of goes really well. So I guess this is a slightly healthier version of a coffee and a cigarette. Yeah. Kind of. Mm -hmm. Kind of healthier. Let's just say yeah. Yeah. Donuts are healthier than cigarettes. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I like this. I like the whiskey. The whiskey's great. I'm mm. a big fan of that too. You'd think normally a fifty would just blow my socks off, but mm. actually, yeah. I feel like it's going nice, eh? Mm. June, what are you saying? What are you're you going to get a wallet around oh. the ear next time you're home. Twenty a day. I used to be mum. Mm. Twenty a day. <laughs> <laughs> No, that is um, that is good. You you close your eyes that you think you're an Isla with that. Mm. Like a lot of a lot of distilleries that aren't famous for peat um, do bring out peat expressions, and they are quite gentle. Like Balvenie do the peat week. Um, uh, Glen Fiddick do fire and cane. Um, Tomat and cube bokken, mm -hmm. although they're not, not actually technically the same. Yeah. Um, there's yeah, there's quite a few distilleries will release a 
repeated expression. And actually, Tom and Towel did one called Petey Tang as oh, well. Yeah. Never tried that. So they do a classic old Ballantrune, which is a non-age statement whiskey. They do the 10, um, the 15, and they do a Petey Tang, mm. um, which I've not actually tried, but I think that's up my, I think the Petey Tang is not 50%, it's mm -hmm. not non-chill filtered. Mm -hmm. I think that is... Is this aged or non-aged? 10, 10 year old. It's a 10 year old. 10 year old, yeah. Um, Great. And yeah, definitely packs that mouthfeel. I, mm. I love that. I think, um, you know, smoke and peak isn't necessarily everyone's cup of tea. You know, definitely it is mine, but it's not everyone's. And water really helps, I find, yeah. as well. And something's a bit big. Like a 50, I would normally always add water to that. Do you know, I might even add some? Just, just I did a little bit. Just um, try it. It's the first really smoky whiskey we've done with donuts. Mm -hmm. Um... We we're a wee bit not nervous of doing it, but just it's a big, big flavor, mm -hmm. you know. But what do you guys think of that smoky whiskey and donuts? Mm -hmm. And chocolate really works with a lot of whiskeys. So I know it's mocha, but maybe you could chop and change and see if you're, if you're not big on the smoke, maybe they work with another another whiskey for you. Mm. I might make a blind now. Mm. This, holy shamoli, got to get a little bit of that in. Yeah. Any questions, John? We've seen the Sharpie come out. Mm -hmm. No. I don't know if I'm, I can't imagine a grain in this. It's going to. I've actually finished all my grain. Oh. Pretty much. There's yeah. a little dribble left, but. No, this was the grain. First one, wasn't uh, it? What's in the first one? A silo. Uh huh. Mm. I know it was grain and scotch, that wasn't it? Grain and malt whiskey. And malt, yeah. That... And malt, yeah. Yeah. Whereas this was all, all grain. Ah. And this one was Nutella, and this one was, what was this one again? Custard. Marzipan? <laughs> uh -huh. uh, yeah, that was yeah. Custard. See, I listened to you, you see. I didn't listen. <laughs> you liar. Uh, um okay guys. So I think that's kind of us coming to the end of the, the tasting. So um feel free to mix and match and tell us what you want to do. I'm gonna make a blend while we do um some thank yous. Um so um thanks to Hazel um and Mark at William Grant. So they've both supported the event really, really well. So uh, last week they supported with the Balvenny and this week with Glenfiddich 15, which was fantastic gram. So um, just to tell everyone, kind of know everyone knows the bars are kind of struggling just now. So um, these kind of guys supporting us makes a big, big difference. So thank you to, to those guys at William Grant. Yeah. Um, thanks to you and Gunn as well for taking the time. He's a very, very busy guy and um, really interesting insight into kind of Hague and Hague Club. Um, and just kind of good fun stories about his travels as well with, I know, with Mr. Wow. Beckham. Uh, which is, that. That's really yeah, scary, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, I know. Um, so, yeah, thanks, Yoon, for, for taking the time and, Cheers, and, and, and kind of chatting to us. <laughs> um, we've also got uh, Ian and Claire at Tom and Towel, who, again, uh, did the old Ballantrun and Graham as well, the distillery manager. I drove down on Monday to the distillery um, to pick up the whiskey, and um, Graham took some time to, to chat to me and, and sort out all the, all the whiskey for us as well. So, Thanks to Ian, Claire, and Graham. Um, we've also got Nicole, uh, as always. Thank ah. you for making the donuts. No problem uh, with at all. Your, your sister as well, that. next door. Yeah, Neil. Um, working, help. working all week on on those and coming up with the the, the flavors. I think. Yeah. Week on week out, you kind of keep surprising us with different mm -hmm. flavors, which is which is great. I just love reading these back because you, you see what people like and what they don't like, what they've matched up. So yeah, any any little notes you have, please let us know because it's great to you. Yeah, and John as well for looking after our IT side of things over IT, here. IT Come John. say hello, John. No, he's saying no. <laughs> he's shy. saying no. He's saying no. He's Come not on, into. John. Come on, John. Give us a wave. Get the comments. <laughs> Come on, let's get John in. Come on, John. <laughs> wave. There he oh. is. <laughs> Um, and to the drivers as well, we had some help delivering all these packs to you guys as well. So thanks to them. Yeah. And lastly, thank you to you guys as well. Um, these events have been really, really well supported as soon as we put the tickets up. Absolutely. You guys yeah. are on it. And I recognize a lot of the names we can, well, every sort of fortnight, you guys continue to support it. So um, really, really helps us, keeps us busy, um, keeps me off the beers every day, try to organize everything. So, <laughs> um, And then we really enjoy the night with you as well, which is great. We really look forward to it. Um, Absolutely, yeah. So the final thing, I think, is tickets. We've had a load of people asking us about tickets for this Father's, Father's Day. Day one, which we're doing. This so, is very exciting. So, yeah, so we, um, some of the guys who have supported the tasting, um, Mark and Ian and Claire and stuff, we've actually been trialing sending out those donuts um, a couple of days ago wrapping them up in cling film and little kind of takeaway boxes and 
making sure they're really solid when they're packed and it's actually worked and the guys have been pretty honest with the feedback um and if they weren't up to standards we wouldn't we wouldn't be doing it but mm-hmm. um they're saying yep it's good they're they're arriving and they're fine so um this father's day is the sunday the 21st next um, sunday isn't it yeah but we're going to do the tasting on the saturday night just we think that's a better night to do it so um as soon as we finish here we're going to put tickets on our website um you'll see there's two options so there's one um that says local um which is um 35 pounds a ticket which is kind of what you guys have all been all been doing so if you live in sort of Inverness, Nairn, Elgin, Dingwall sort of area go for one of those and we can do what we always do and drop them off at your door um if you've got your your dad lives somewhere else or you want to buy it for someone else who anywhere in the UK um we can do that just click the posted one um it's 45 pounds which covers sort of the next day delivery from Royal Mail which I think is about nine pounds mm-hmm. and then obviously the packaging, the packaging and stuff as well yeah. and all that so um I know it seems like a bit more expensive but we need to do next day guarantee delivery just to make sure it gets to you on time and they're super and fresh, they're fresh. Well. Yeah, yeah we don't want to risk that um so that's the two tickets so just if you are looking to do it for Father's Day and make sure you you pick the right one um we have a lot of people asking about it so I don't yeah. think the tickets will be around for too long so you guys who are watching this have sort of first go at them before we kind of make them live so um yeah I think that's about us just now so yeah yeah. Thanks very much for, for joining us again. Um, we'll sign off here and we will make the tickets live. I always forget to make them live and my phone starts going. We'll, we'll do it. We'll do it. Because we always close away. the laptop. Say, oh, yeah, that was great. Yeah. Enjoy which whiskey you like. <laughs> and end up just getting a bit drunk. So, not this time. This time I know everyone We're wants them really quickly. Away, so, yeah. I'm going to do it right now. So, yeah, thank you guys. We'll log off and enjoy the rest of your drama. Yeah. And, yeah. Cheers. And as always, if you have any questions, anything that you haven't asked that comes up, just give Matt, just drop a line. Just or me. Just, just, <laughs> just, Matt. just me. Nothing for me. No problem. Just uh, ask Matt. Yeah. yeah, or myself. I saw that yeah. there was maybe some recipe questions, so I will try and answer them if you drop me a wee message um, and I'll let you guys know. Um, Perfect. Yeah. Great. Okay, cool. we will end the podcast so there. And yeah, we'll cheers, meet them cheers. live right now. So cheers, guys. Cheers, Thank guys. you so much. Thank you. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> you want to go top right? <laughs> and that is you.